Hello, my name's Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the seismic industry. So, reflection on seismic family trees, what's going on? So, this video is prompted by the merger of two big seismic attractors, TGS and PGS. Now, mergers are nothing new in the oil services industry. Companies have been uniting since the 1930s when modern seismic began. But new companies are regularly founded and subsidiaries have been spun off by major co co uh, contractors. Some of the major geophysical contractors are themselves owned by bigger companies. For example, Western Geco is owned by Schlumberger. Now, this uh, merger of TGS and PGS prompted a little bit of a Highlander meme. You know, there can be only one. I don't think it's quite like that, but the seismic industry has challenges and they're trying to meet them. So a little bit about the uh, seismic industry and how it works. So first of all, we have seismic acquisition. We have two pictures here. We have marine acquisition in the form of uh, a seismic boat, uh, PGS Ramform Titan, and a vibrosized truck um, acquiring land data somewhere in the Sahara. You've also got transition zone acquisition, uh, extreme shallow water acquisition, ocean, ocean bottom uh, cable acquisition, etc. You also have the seismic equipment industry, which provides equipment for the seismic acquisition contractors. The seismic data uh, shot records are then processed to produce images which can be interpreted. This is quite a complicated and convoluted process. What you then have is the data itself, which can be subjected to specialist analysis for interpretation, which is what I do. And you also have data which is sold and resold, non-exclusive seismic data owned by the contractors. So let's talk a little bit about data and how it works. So first of all, we have proprietary data in the yellow box. This is owned by operating oil companies and is bespoke. Data is acquired over areas that are licensed by the oil company. It's acquired by an independent contractor. So you would get somebody like Shearwater or CGG or BGP or one of the others or PGS to, to acquire the data for you. It can then be processed again by a processing contractor. And the data is exclusive to the oil company. The oil company owns it and can do what it likes with it. It can trade data, um, it can sell data. But in some countries, there's also stipulation that the data must be released into the public domain after a certain length of years. For example, UK and Norway have this. The blue box, you have the non-exclusive data. Now, this is data that's owned by the seismic contractor. It's acquired over areas normally that are open, that are not licensed. But it can also be acquired over areas that are licensed by an oil company on a non-exclusive basis with an agreement of the oil company. It's acquired and processed by the one contractor. Occasionally, you will have contractors that will acquire data uh, on their own behalf. So they, somebody like, uh, for example, Searcher, TGS also used to do this, would get an acquisition company to acquire the data for them, and then they would then sell it. Uh, the data usage is available to purchase by anybody. So they would sell the right to use the data to the oil companies, but they retain data ownership and data copyright. And some of the... Um, Data usage agreements can be quite complicated, and you really would want to get a specialist to look at that. Um, this data is almost never released. You have some other data models. For example, governments can have data acquired for them by a contract, and the government owns the data. Then they sell it on as part of data packages, as part of license rounds. Or you can have multiple data ownership models. For example, Mega Merge, we have data that's stitched together and processed. And BGS did that very successfully. Brief history of seismic data. Again, this is very much condensed. So started in the early 1920s um, with dynamite and uh, geophones on land in Oklahoma. In the 1950s, you had invention of vibrosize, which led to less environmental damage. You had the first marine surveys, the full multifold data. We've uh, stacked several traces together to eliminate uh, random noise. 1970s, you had uh, the first 3D surveys, advanced in seismic processing, first with supercomputers. 1980s, 3D becomes more widespread, but still relatively small. First computer did voice stations, remember my first landmark. Use of seismic attributes, use of AVO amplitude versus offset. 1990s, you had larger 3D surveys, ended up being like 100 square kilometers, moved to 1,000 square kilometers. Pre-stack depth migration, I've got a video on my channel talking about depth domain seismic, 4D time-lapse seismic advanced seismic attributes, and ocean bottom um, seismic, four-component seismic, which also uses shear waves and converted waves. 2000s, yet more advanced processing algorithms. You had nodal geophones, which are independent, rather than connected by cable. Broadband seismic, you get the low frequencies integration with CSEM. Megascale 3Ds, which could cover the entire basins. Um, new algorithms, new everything. And then 2010s, full waveform inversion, automated interpretation, yet more advances. 
I'm sure I've not mentioned, I'm sure I failed to mention some things, but um, this gives you an idea of continuous improvement, continuous advances in technology. So if we look at the main contractors, we have Western GECO, we have the TGS, BGS combo, as will be CGG and Shear Water. And we'll do a look at some of the family trees of those particular contractors. If you look at the TGS, PGS tree, so this is the PGS tree. So you have Grant Tensile, Norpac, ERC, RSI, Rock Solid Images, a specialist inversion company, etc. And they were all based here. So PGS is listed on the Norwegian Stock Exchange, as is TGS, and as will be the new company. TGS um, started off as NOPEC, primarily a data broker and data processor. They took on BIPS, a small uh, British processing company, Spectrum, a larger data focused company to form TGS uh, Spectrum. Also took on Fairfield and MagSize, uh, American acquisition companies into the TGS family. And then there's the bottom part of the tree here, which is ION, started off as input output, a um, equipment manufacturer, took on Green Mountain Junior Physics, a specialist American um, geophysical company, GX Technology, technology company following a uh, focus on, on um, pre-stack depth migration. Then merged into ION. ION had some problems and were taken over by TGS last year. TGS also had a spin-off called Rockwave. So again, you can see quite a complicated uh, set of relationships. Western Chico used to be the big daddy of the oil and of the uh, seismic industry. Western Geophysical, originally owned by Little Industries, later bought by Baker Hughes to form Western Atlas. Then you had GSI Geophysical Service Incorporated. Used to be a, a very large geophysical company, got taken over by Halliburton and form HGS and then sold into Western Atlas to be part of Western Chico. Spin-off from HGS was BIPS, small British processing company, and a much bigger spin-off was Texas Instruments. Bottom part of the tree is GECO and Prackler. So GECO is a Norwegian company, but it was uh, originally made in Marine. And these are the people that went into it, Gelt Geophysical, Merlin Profilers, and then went to the GECO Prackler. Prackler, Prackler was formed up from Prackler and Prackler Seismos, two German companies, mainly land-focused. They also took on SSL, Seismograph Service Limited, an American company with large British presence who had to solve off the borehole seismic. So this all formed a speaking moth called Western GECO, originally a JV between Baker Hughes and Schlumberger, now subsequently fully owned by Schlumberger. They then span off this organization QI, special geophysical company, and Shearwater is the company that bought most of their boats. And we'll talk about Shearwater in a minute. CGG, Compagnie Générale de Geophysique, is a French company, independent, originally taken out of Schlumberger, then Cercel, big equipment manufacturer, which is still owned and keep the brand going, took on SSL Borehole Seismic and then took on a small Norwegian company called Acre Geo, which was effectively spun out of Acre. They formed CGG Veritas by merging with Veritas, which were Gidicon and Veritas, and also Hampson Russell Specialized Inversion Company. CGG also took over the assets of the Horizon branch. So Horizon to Seismic Horizon, Simon Petroleum Technologies, Robertson Research went to Simon Petroleum Technologies, then out again, then into Fugro together with Jason Inversion, and then Fugro sold all of those assets to CGG. CGG then had a few spin offs, uh, Seabed and Geosoftware, which is basically the old Hampson Russell soft, uh, software suite with extra additions, and the boats being sold off to Shearwater. Seabed specialists focused on uh, ocean bottom uh, seismic, sold off to PXGeo. If you look at Shearwater, they're the main acquisition company in terms of marine, although they also do do processing. Shearwater uh, was originally formed out of both, uh, Dolphin Geophysical, Bergen Oil Services, Open CPS, which has spun out of several uh, US companies. Um, then they took on the boats from Western GECO, CGG, and a company called Polarcus that had serious financial problems, and they sold all their boats to Western GECO, uh, to Shearwater. And um, their main assets remained with PXGO. So that's again quite a complicated uh, situation. Shearwater, the main acquisition company in the West. You also had some other companies that mainly processing and non exclusive data focus. There's the Kinetics tree, which included the old Ensign Geophysics, Geotrace, and then uh, these companies here, CSA and Geoprovider, that went off from there. Searcher Seismic, mainly focused on, uh, on getting other people to acquire seismic data for them, processing the data, and then acting as Jacob Brokers. Doug, mainly a software company that also do processing, Jebco, mainly a data company, and these other people that do, uh, again, similar sorts of things. 
Other Western companies would be some small marine companies such as Seabird Exploration, Guardline, which mainly does site surveying, some Polish companies such as Geophysica, Geophysica Torun, that out of Fold Iron Curtain became globally uh, present, American companies such as Dawson, and then quite an interesting company called Explore. We had a very interesting talk by their um, chief executive, Alan Chatterney, who talked about their particular novel acquisition methods and the amount of uh, uh, reduction in environmental impact that they're uh, methods uh, have done. And Polaris, a major Canadian contractor. Then you also have non Western companies. So the giant BGP, giant Chinese company, COSL, Chinese company, part uh, of Cinepex, some Russian companies such as Rosgeo, the Ga Gazprom branch of Geophysics, Geotech, TGN. And then Art Gas, which is a company which is basically based in Saudi Arabia, and Energio, which is based in, in Algeria. Again, uh, these people were originally confined to their own countries, but then are moving out significantly, particularly BGP, which has done an enormous amount of work and they've done excellent jobs for companies that I've been worked, working with. So what next? Well, it's tough time for science big industry. Now you've got a bit of a decline amongst Western oil and gas companies. The majors, are they gonna be exploring as much? Are they going to be doing as much uh, further on, on, particularly offshore, because offshore is expensive, offshore is very capital intensive for the uh, seismic companies. There's less decline onshore USA, unconventional shale. There's some companies that are doing quite interesting novel things that are there. But there's more demand from national oil companies. But again, some of them have their own contractors, for example, the Chinese. And will they do quite the same things that, uh, that Western companies do? No, they're new markets for seismic, which is very good, but they're very cost driven and they have smaller budgets. For example, hazard analysis and offshore wind, repurposing old data and acquiring new data. CCUS, uh, seismic monitoring of CO2 storage sites, geothermal, nuclear waste storage, mining and minerals. Again, how big are these things going to be? Uh, most of those are going to be onshore. Again, is it going to be a, a bonanza? Well, I don't know. Then there's the competition with state-owned contractors going global. So they're mostly Chinese, BGP and Sinopec. Again, they do excellent work. And sometimes if you have a Chinese company which is exploring abroad, they will use their own contractors. Then there are the challenges that we face. We need to introduce environmental impact and continue to improve safety. We've been doing that for quite a while. Um, Alan Chatterney in one of his uh, talks gave a very interesting picture of what his new seismic acquisition does in terms of how little damage there is relative to the old style. We need to work on that, we need to do that. Seismic industries met challenges throughout its history and will do so in the future. So let's be optimistic. We've grown a lot in technology. We've grown a lot in safety. We've grown a lot in reducing our environmental impact and moving forwards. It's an amazing industry part of, doing amazing things with amazing science. So here's some pictures. Seismic boats, land surveys, node or geophones, images in the shallow, aimed at uh, potential hazard awareness, full waveform inversion, small nodes. Moving forward, delivering for our customers and for humanity. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.